Hi, I'm Greg Perkins with Upbridge Bellows, and you're watching the Bellows Bottom Line Video Edition. Today, we're going to be talking about Bellows Cycle Life. There's a lot of questions about why there seems to be so much difference between EDGMA, which is a design standard, and codes such as ASME Section 8 and ASME 31.3. Everything else seems to, be, uh, seems to line up, but when you're specifying expansion joints and you may be a 31.3 guy or a Section 8 guy, you may wonder why am I well, why is my criteria so much different than EDGMA, which is the is what the manufacturer is quoting or what we would quote. Well, let me explain how um, how the the cycle life was was developed and and how those three codes came to be different. And they're not quite as different as you may think. So, what happened if you're going to if you can come up with a fatigue curve? What you do is First, you've got to draw little blue lines, but you you have, uh, on this side, we're going to have uh, total stress over here on this lopsided line right here. We're going to have cycles, and you take a bellows and you pressure test it, you pressure, pressurize it, and then you you cycle it, and uh, there's going to be, and it's, it's going to fail at some point. It's got so many cycles in it, and uh, there's equations that go along with those uh, in Edgema. And it has to do with, it, with uh, hoop stress and deflection stress, and those are added up in a certain way, come up with a total stress range, and that's what we're going to call here. That's what we're going to call ST. So if you have this bellows, and say you're going to only cycle a little bit, so you get lots of cycles, and you do that, and eventually it develops a fatigue crack, and you go, aha, okay, now I know how many cycles that it failed at, and then uh, that corresponds with a stress range over here, and so I got a data point. All right, but I can't do a curve off of one data point. So I go over and I say, I'm gonna get some data points over here on this other side of the curve, and I'm really gonna stroke this balance back and forth, and so I'm really jumping up the total stress range, and guess what? It's gonna fail even earlier than this because we, we really uh, took it to that balance, and so now I got a data point over here. And then we do that a few more times, doom, 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 and we're going to come up with a fatigue curve. Well, what Edge, the Edge Organization, Expansion Joint Manufacturers Association, did was they got several manufacturers, a lot of cent manufacturers. So I, uh, memory serves me right about six, uh, six uh, of uh, the companies, and they submitted lots of bellows, and they, they did all the testing along certain guidelines, and they all pooled all those data points. And all those data points formed a nice little pattern of blue dots all along here. And you know, you would expect from, again, lots of different manufacturers, uh, most of the methods of those guys are all the same, but you had, you had some really good scatter points up here. And you know what? You had some flyers down here. And that's just going to happen. I don't know any any time you ever develop a, a curve like this, and the more data points you get, you know you're you're going to get some scatter on the high ends and low ends. And Edgma took all these little blue dot uh, blue dot data points, and they did a best fit curve, which goes right through the average of all those, and that is the Edgma fatigue curve. So now. If you're going to do a bellows design, you don't need to go cycle test that particular design. All you need to do is run the calculations based on those same equations uh, that, that come up with this total stress range. And then uh, you go down your curve and you find your point and that's your calculated cycle life for that bellows. All right, so here's what um, the ASME, there was an ASME section uh, 313 committee. And then uh, there was a Section 8 committee, Appendix 26 committee. So the 313 guy said, you know, I don't, I don't think we want a best fit curve. I think we want to be a little bit more conservative uh, than that. And we want to do, we want to do kind of a, a, a lower bound curve that pretty much captures everything. I, we want this curve to be really safe. And that's going to be our curve. And that's the B313. It's got more factors of safety in it. The Appendix 26 committee 
that's the, the juice stamped, coat stamped uh, type of vessels, heat exchangers almost exclusively. They said, you know, we want to do a lower bound. We don't want any data points falling below our curve, and which was is ridiculous because there are lots of scattered down here. And I think to be fair to those thugs, to be fair to those guys, um, they took out a couple of data points. I don't recall how many, but their their curve then lower bounded even further than that. You know, all three of those 313, Section 8, and EDGMA based on the same data. It's just how much factor of safety are they putting on those? And if you ask my opinion, and I think you are asking my opinion, this is nuts. This is too conservative. This is just ridiculous. Those guys are thugs. They uh, slit some of our tires. They uh, beat up a couple of guys, rolled a couple of guys. One guy went on a fishing trip. We never heard from him again. But anyway, we kept our house quiet. They got that passed uh, through Congress. And so it remains to this day. Now, again, to be fair to those guys, they would say, you just need to re reframe your thinking instead of being able to do, say, 7,000 uh, cycles with EDGMA. Uh, this curve now, this total same stress range, would equate to 200 cycles. So people really shouldn't be specifying 7,000 cycles. They should be more realistic and they should specify 200 cycles. Well, the problem is with heat exchangers is People up front put on factors of safety. They've got this tube shell. Uh, they uh, uh, actually they got the tubes. They got the shell, and and they tend to take the max and the min between those, and they say that's one cycle, which is probably unrealistic, and it's got factors of safety on it right there to begin with. And then they they forget about the 200. Then they want 7,000, but they want it with the the uh, section eight curve. It almost is an impossible bell. As it gets so long, it becomes uh, unstable and it becomes more of a safety issue than than before. So that's why I'm not a big uh, a proponent of, of this curve. But I understand it's now uh, uh, federal law. It's not federal law. It's ASME code. But that's just the way it is for uh, for heat exchangers. Now the 313 guys. What we see, a lot of people realize that, they, they got 7,000 cycles stuck in their head. Where that came from is the piping guys will tell you this, the, the pipe loops that cycle. Uh, that's what they base uh, the movement of pipe loops on uh, when they're not using expansion joints. And they say, hey, 7,000 cycles is pretty good. We're, we're going to use that for pipe loops. And so then, okay, it's, it's good for pipe loops, it's good for expansion joints. You know what? See all these blue dots right there? They never did all those blue dots with pipe loops. I think I saw something back in the 70s where they did uh, uh, strain gauges uh, on, a, on a couple of piping piping systems, and voila, uh, pipe loops are, are often running and they're okay, but suddenly the expansion joints, we got to do a lower bound curve, even though there's more data on bellows than any other vessel or equipment out there that you'll find. That's my particular pet peeve. I know you can't tell that from this video. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to mention this about the Section 8 guys. Keep that between you and me because well, I don't want to visit me. So this video is just you and I. We're talking here. Two friends. All right. So now you know. This is how uh, fatigue curves are set up. This is the difference. 31.3 edge one. I, I was about to say, before somebody out there interrupted me, that 31.3 uh, a lot of times you'll, you, you'll see 31.3 imposed, but... Um, People have the presence of mind to say, but I want 7,000 cycles age. And they understand that, and they understand the uh, factors of safety that we're throwing on up here. Anyway, that's been our session today on, on Cycle Life. Join us at www.oakridgebellows.com for more controver or less controversial videos. And again, this was between you and me. We're, we're cool with that. All right.